Legendary Passages, Episode 51, Labor's Legacy, Herculean Adventures from the Library of Apollodorus. For the next six episodes, we will revisit the legends of Hercules and the legacy of his labors. First, his final labor was to journey into Hades and bring back the three-headed dog Cerberus. While there, he rescued Theseus, but his friend Perithous could not be saved because he had sought to kidnap the goddess Persephone. His labors now at an end, Hercules gave his wife Megara to his nephew Aeolus. Hercules then pursued Aeol, daughter of Eurytus, was refused, went mad, and killed Iphitus, son of Eurytus. Hercules wished to be absolved again of murder, but all refused him. Eventually an oracle told him to sell himself into slavery for three years, and to give the money to Eurytus. He was purchased by Omphal, queen of Lydia, and cleansed her lands of monsters and bandits. He witnessed the fall of Icarus and buried him. Daedalus even made a statue of Hercules, but it was so lifelike that he attacked it. Once his service had ended, Hercules decided to get revenge on those who wronged him during his labors. First, he started a Trojan War. His strongest ally was Telamon, son of Iacus, husband of Periobea, and father of Ajax. Unfortunately, Telamon breached the walls of Troy first, but he quickly built an altar to Hercules in order to appease him. Telamon won Princess Laomedon, and they became parents to Teucer. Hercules put Podarces on the throne, now called Priam. After slaying King Apilus of the Coens and fighting the Gigantomachi in Phlegra, Hercules next attacked King Agius and Elis. Agius recruited Siamese twins, Eurytus and Cetetus, to fight for him, but Hercules slew them both at Cleone. After killing Agius, he put the king's son Phileus on the throne and then created the Olympic Games. Next time, we expand on Hercules' war against the kingdom of Elis. Labor's Legacy A Legendary Passage From the Library of Apollodorus Translated by J. G. Fraser A twelfth labor imposed on Hercules was to bring Cerberus from Hades. Now this Cerberus had three heads of dogs, the tail of a dragon, and on his back the heads of all sorts of snakes. When Hercules was about to depart to fetch him, he went to Omolpus at Elysis, wishing to be initiated. However, it was not then lawful for foreigners to be initiated, since he proposed to be initiated as the adopted son of Phileus. But not being able to see the mysteries because he had not been cleansed of the slaughter of the centaurs, he was cleansed by Omolpus and then initiated. And having come to Tineum in Laconia, where is the mouth of the descent to Hades, he descended through it. But when the souls saw him, they fled, save Maligar and the Gorgon Medusa. Hercules drew his sword against the Gorgon, as if she were alive, but he learned from Hermes that she was an empty phantom. And being come near to the gates of Hades, he found Theseus and Perithous him who wooed Persephone in wedlock, and was therefore bound fast. And when they beheld Hercules, they stretched out their hands, as if they should be raised from the dead by his might. And Theseus, indeed, he took by the hand and raised up. But when he would have brought up Perithous, the earth quaked, and he let go. And he rolled away also the stone of Ascaphilus, and wishing to provide the souls with blood, he slaughtered one of the kind of Hades. But Menoetes, son of Sathonimus, who tended the king, challenged Hercules to wrestle, and, being seized round the middle, had his ribs broken, howbeit he was let off at the request of Persephone. When Hercules asked Pluto for Cerberus, Pluto ordered him to take the animal, provided he mastered him without the use of the weapons which he carried. Hercules found him, the gates of Acheron, and, cased in his curious and covered by the lion skin, he flung his arms round the head of the brute, and though the dragon in its tail bit him, 
He never relaxed his grip and pressure till it yielded. So he carried it off and descended through Trozen. But Demeter turned Ascaphilus into a short-eared owl, and Hercules, after showing Cerberus to Eurystheus, carried him back to Hades. After his labors, Hercules went to Thebes and gave Megara to Aeolus, and, wishing himself to wed, he ascertained that Eurytus, prince of Ochelia, had proposed the hand of his daughter Aeol as a prize to him who should vanquish himself and his sons in archery. So he came to Ochelia, and though he proved himself better than them at archery, yet he did not get the bride. For while Ephitus, the elder of Eurytus' sons, said that Aeol should be given to Hercules, Eurytus and the others refused, and said they feared that, if he got children, he would again kill his offspring. Not long after, some cattle were stolen from Euboa by Autolycus, and Eurytus supposed that it was done by Hercules. But Iphitus did not believe it, and went to Hercules. And meeting him, as he came from Ferry after saving the dead Alcestis for Admetus, he invited him to seek the kind with him. Hercules promised to do so, and entertained him. But going mad again, he threw him from the walls of Tyrans. Wishing to be purified of the murder, he repaired to Neleus, who was prince of the Pylians. And when Neleus rejected his request, on the score of his friendship with Eurytus, he went to Amyclae and was purified by a diaphebus, son of Hippolytus. But being afflicted with a dire disease on the account of the murder of Iphitus, he went to Delphi and inquired how he might be rid of the disease. As the Pythian priestess answered him, not by oracles, he was fain to plunder the temple, and, carrying off the tripod, to institute an oracle of his own. But Apollo fought him, and Zeus threw a thunderbolt between them. When they had been parted, Hercules received an oracle, which declared that the remedy for his disease was for him to be sold, to serve for three years, and to pay compensation for the murder to Eurytus. After the delivery of the oracle, Hermes sold Hercules, and he was bought by Omphal, daughter of Iodarnes, queen of Lydia, to whom at his death her husband Timolus had bequeathed the government. Eurytus did not accept the compensation when it was presented to him, but Hercules served Omphal as a slave, and in the course of his servitude he seized and bound the Cercrops at Ephesus, and as for Silius and Aulus, who compelled passing strangers to dig, Hercules killed him with his daughter Zenodice, after burning the vines with the roots. And having put in to the island of Dolochi, he saw the body of Icarus washed ashore and buried it, and he called the island Icaria instead of Dolochi. In return, Daedalus made a portrait statue of Hercules at Pisa, which Hercules mistook at night for living and threw a stone and hid it. During the time of his servitude with Omphal, it is said that the voyage to Colchis and the hunt of the Caledonian boar took place, and that Theseus, on his way from Trozen, cleared the isthmus of malefactors. After his servitude, being rid of his disease, he mustered an army of noble volunteers and sailed for Ilium with eighteen ships of fifty oars each. And having come to port at Ilium, he left the guard of the ships to Oikles, and himself, with the rest of the champions, set out to attack the city. Albeit, Leomedon marched against the ships with the multitude and slew Oikles in battle, but being repulsed by the troops of Hercules, he was besieged. In the siege, once laid, Telamon was the first to breach the wall and enter the city, and after him, Hercules. But when he saw that Telamon had entered it first, he drew his sword and rushed at him, loath that anybody should be reputed a better man than himself. Perceiving that, Telamon collected stones that lay to hand, and when Hercules asked him what he did, he said he was building an altar to Hercules, the glorious victor. Hercules thanked him, and when he had taken the city and shot down Laomedon and his sons, except Odarces, he assigned Laomedon's daughter, Hesion, as a prize to Telamon, and allowed her to take with her whomsoever of the captives she would. 
when she chose her brother Podarces, Hercules said that he must first be a slave and then be ransomed by her. So when he was being sold, she took the veil from her head and gave it as a ransom. Hence Podarces was called Priam. When Hercules was sailing from Troy, Hera sent grievous storms, which so vexed Zeus that he hung her from Olympus. Hercules sailed to Kos, and the Coans, thinking he was leading a piratical squadron, endeavored to prevent his approach by a shower of stones. But he forced his way in and took the city by night, and slew the king, Eurypylus, son of Poseidon, by Astapalia. And Hercules was wounded in the battle by Chalcedon, but Zeus snatched him away so that he took no harm. And having laid waste coasts, he came through Athena's agency to Phlegra, and sided with the gods in their victorious war on the giants. Not long afterwards, he collected an Arcadian army, and being joined by volunteers from the first men in Greece, he marched against Agius. But Agius, hearing of the war that Hercules was levying, appointed Eurytus and Cetitus generals of the Eleans. They were two men joined in one, who surpassed all of that generation in strength, and were sons of Actor by Wollion, though their father was said to be Poseidon. Now Actor was a brother of Agius. But it came to pass that on the expedition Hercules fell sick, hence he concluded a truce with the Molionides. But afterwards, being appraised of his illness, they attacked the army and slew many. On that occasion, therefore, Hercules beat a retreat, but afterwards, at the celebration of the third Isthmian festival, when the Eleans set the Molionides to take part in the sacrifices, Hercules waylaid and killed them at Cleon, and marching on Elis, took the city. And having killed Agius and his sons, he restored Phileus, and bestowed on him the kingdom. He also celebrated the Olympian Games, and found an altar of Pelops, and built six altars of the twelve gods.